Hi, I have to apologize for being dark in here. I'm trying to make this a pretty quick video. Today I want to show you how to make a little cookie tin wood burning stove without using a drill and just a little bit of basic common knowledge and you can get a decent wood burning stove for an emergency situation. Now here I have just a single can it's not open and I need this for one reason and only one reason here's the lid here I have a knife now if you're gonna use a knife make sure it has a pretty strong blade on it now I have a hammer here but you can use things like blocks of wood a cement block uh, a brick anything you can hit that end of the knife with and I have a permanent marker you can use whatever you have Now I'm going to somewhat center. Now it does not have to be perfect. The can on my lid and draw a circle. All right, we're done with that. So you can see a circle here. Now, I do not want to cut everything here yet. What I want to do is I need to make a bigger circle around it. Now, I am not good at freehand. You'll have to excuse me. And it doesn't make a difference if it's nice and perfect. Something like that. I hope you can see both circles. Now what I want to do is take some of this and move it. Now you can see I put some lines between the two circles. Now when cutting this out, you want to cut the outside circle until you hit the line you made. And then jump over here and start cutting around until you hit your line. And do it all the way around up here. Leave these. And once you cut all this here, cut here. Let me mark all this. Now I hope you can see this. I apologize if you can't. Um, where I made my little slats, I want to cut the inside here and then outside everywhere else. Leave three of these because what you're going to do with these, and you can make them bigger than this, that's fine, is if you want to make sure your pot's going to sit higher, you can in fact make them as big as you want because what this is going to do is once you cut your circle here and cut around here these are going to flip upward to hold your pan in place now remember this is some pretty weak metal so you can't put a lot of weight on it but it will raise your pan up so as long as you're not using something like a 25 pound pressure cooker on this it should work good. Here, first of all, you need to know where this is at, your seam is. You do not cut on your seam. You can cut anywhere near your seam. Now, I do have some water in here. I just rinsed this out. I'm going to put a small... I don't know if you can see that. If you can't, I apologize. Uh, there it is. Now I'm going to go to the other side and make a small. Now the thing is, you do not have to actually cut these out um, like this. Right here. 
let me see if I can see that in there right there you can actually where you're putting these you can just use your knife and put a couple slashes in that's not a big deal so you don't have to actually cut this out now on the opposite here where there's nothing here you want a bigger space Now try to stay up under the lip if possible. And on the other side too. Now it doesn't matter. These don't have to be perfect. Just like that. So on this side where the small slashes are, you can actually just take their knife and slash it two or three times going down. You don't have to cut it out on a square. But you really need to have two large squares cut in this so you can feed material in here if you have a large pot on it. Now be careful with this because this is going to be very, very sharp. And very dangerous so if you do it this way be really careful and it's going to make a lot of noise most likely now always have some type of board or something underneath you want to wear uh, you don't cut into whatever you're using like I said I'm on my bed here I would be doing this outside normally, but it is snowing. Now be careful when using a knife. Like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. And this may take quite a while. But take your time. Now what I'm doing is I'm making small notches in here, but I'm not uh, making it all the way. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you. Like I said, take your time. You do not want to hurt yourself. You do not want to cut yourself. It doesn't matter. It does not matter if the slashes are um, real deep or real big or not. Because I'll show you what I'm going to do after I'm done. And the thing is, you don't even need to take off four edges. You just need to take off three Remember, this is an emergency situation stove. And try to make sure you go all the way through. Now, I hope you can see this. You can see it's still joined in certain places. Then you take your knife and it's best you have someone else hold your can for you. Find an opening. Now be very, very careful.
because this is very very sharp now if it won't cut that way you may have to get it from the inside which is fine what you do is you take it sideways like this and cut and like I said it works better with two people And you can see it's starting to cut through that. Remember, be very careful. All right, you can see here, I've only cut three sides. Now I need to get this corner again right here. There we go. Now you don't have to cut the back side here. All you do is push that inward and push it against the inside wall. Now I have to get the other side. Now, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, once you get the knife to go through, you can work the knife. Now, remember, this is going to be very sharp. You see how the knife is coming through? Now I'm pushing down on my knife while I'm cutting and it doesn't matter if you make it larger or smaller you just need something to feed wood into you could actually make this bigger if you wanted to it does not have to be perfect Remember, you're just using this for air holes and to maybe even feed sticks through. Now this is going to bend a little bit because it is really thin material. You can see. Now like I said, you do not really have to cut these out. What you have to do is put some slashes in so it can get extra air. And you can open those up with a screwdriver or anything you have, even your knife.
make sure you be very very careful he said I got a couple slashes here if I wanted to I could actually open this up which I will probably do and then push it in like I did the other two here Let's go ahead and do that to make sure we got plenty of air. And it looks like we got some tape here. I don't care. This is a pretty simple way to make a, a little wood stove you can use. But remember, this is going to be sharp. So be very careful. open this one up a little bit Looks like uh, some of that tape. Remember, be very careful because this can be very, very sharp and you don't want to cut yourself. All right, now we have the base of our stove. We have two large openings. Now you can make these bigger if you want to. But I like to keep a little bit of the top for the lid and a little bit of the bottom to try to hold coals in. Here's our base. This is what our fire is going to burn in. Now the hard part is going to be this one. Because it is flat, it's going to be hard to cut. But I'm going to show you the basic principle of what you're going to do with this. Once again, it does not have to be pretty, it does not have to be perfect.
Okay, here's where the fun part comes in. This is going to be really hard to do because it's going to be so thin and it's hard to hold on to. But you see here we have the back. How you can see I have that. Now you have to find something that has gone through. Now, if you have somebody that can hold it, it's even better. All right, you can see we have a cut out here. Now this is going to go up. And you, if you made it long enough, you can actually bend this over and give it some double support. Just something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to raise your pot up and have enough support to hold your pot. And you will see, if we make three of these, one here, one here, and one here, and you cut around the outside edge here, you will have legs for your pot to stand on. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Instead of using a hammer, of course, you can use anything like a cement block, a brick. But you do need a good sharp knife or something that can you, know, you can beat through this, a flathead screwdriver. And it is going to take a bit of time. You can even take a pair of pliers and like crimp these together if you have pliers. Or put it as like this, squeeze them together. And you can see right there we have our pot stand for one side. Now you will need a decent sized pot for this. But... If you're going to heat water or cook or something like that, you definitely need to have some type of legs. If you don't want to go through all this trouble, you can cut out the entire area. And I would make it smaller, like more in the center. And then just use some automotive sockets and put some screws through it to keep them stable. If you have screws and auto sockets, remember it doesn't matter how wide they are, what matters is the height. Uh, if you're going to use sockets. But if you don't have anything like that, making something like this is pretty simple, it, but it just takes time. Now let's get this thing together. Now remember, it's going to be a little bit bent from where you hammered on it. So it's not going to be super easy. You will have to go around the sides. Make sure that you can get it in. If not, if you have a hard place, there we go. Here is your wood stove without using a drill. Now, once again, I would go through all the way around here and notch this out like I did this one. If you can see that, I apologize if there's not enough light. Um, I would put another notch here, one here, 
fold them up like I did this, and the pockets set there. All this would be open flame. You can feed your wood through here, and it gets air through here, here, and here. It's pretty simple to make out of one of these tins, these Christmas tins. And all you need is basically, you don't even need this. I mean, you can guesstimate how large a hole you want and just draw a circle and start drawing for some um, little pot stands. Now, this is not going to be perfectly flat all the way around because it's just a rough thing that I just threw together. And But as long as it holds your pot above the flame to where the fire can get up under your pot, that's all that counts. And you can see, here's some plastic or tape that was on here. I think that's tape. Uh, maybe plastic. It'll burn off. Anyway, this is how you make a wood stove for uh, with a Christmas tent. Really easy. Now the thing is, this lid is on. Watch. This is going to go quickly. Now, you can actually do the lid before you do the body. If you leave the lid on, it's, it goes pretty quick. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. It's not an issue if um, it, your hole's not perfect. But just remember, you are using a knife. Be very, very careful. And sometimes you will get a little piece that just does not want to let go, like this little piece right here. There we go. Now you can see how fast this is cutting out. Once again, these do not have to be perfect. But you need something to make legs out of. Now you really don't want to cut through the bottom of your can. If the lid is on and you're cutting through the lid, it's pretty fast, it's pretty easy. Like I said, you can do that before you make the sides, if that's what you want to do. But just remember, this is going to be out of shape a little bit. So putting this lid on is going to be a little bit more difficult, as you will have sharp edges. As you can see here. Let me get this on. 
There we go. Now always bend the tin in so you don't hurt yourself. Like I said, if you have somebody to hold it down for you while you're cutting it, it makes it a whole lot easier. Now, this is just a quick one that I'm throwing together. If I wanted it to be permanent, I would make it a little bit better, but... Now, as you can see right here at the end, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, you just take your knife, get some slashes in here. Now, this will be the last piece, I believe. Uh, no, yes, right here. Be very careful trying to cut that last piece out. Because like I said, this is very sharp. There you go. Now what I did was I cut out a section like this. Now you can see this is very sharp. I did try my best not to cut through the bottom. You can see some places here where it almost went through, but not quite. So we have our air holes, our feeding holes, air hole, feeding hole. You can even throw stuff in through the top. And right here, you have your legs built in. Now remember, these are not going to hold a super amount of weight, but they will hold enough you can put a pot or pan on here and cook on it, heat some water, boil some water. This is how you make a very simple cookie tin. See the little Santa Claus? Wood stove for emergencies. No drilling needed. All you need is a knife, sharp knife, something that with a strong blade. You don't even have to use a marker. If you can figure out where you want your legs, you cut them out first. Now, like I said, if you left the lid on and did the lid first, it's much easier. But, like I said, when you're doing the sides, you can take it off and do the sides. You can even leave the lid on when you're doing the sides. It's just more difficult because it's going to try to roll. If you have someone that can hold it for you, or you have something to set it between, like a couple 2x4 blocks or something, or some cement blocks that will hold it, 
then it is much, much, much easier. Now, I will demonstrate this later on, maybe, if I can find some wood outside. But a lot of people are probably wondering, you know, can you make the uh, cookie tin wood stove without a drill? All right, what I did was I made this wood stove out of basic stuff I had at home, simple stuff. Just a can to get a base measurement for the inside, which I don't even use. Now, I basically used a can to figure out how long I need to make my uh, pegs here to put up to make my pot stand. Now, they're not going to be perfect. Your pot may set a little wonky. But, you know, I could probably fix this if I wanted to, you know, mess with it a little bit. You can see here it's a little bit off. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit bent, crooked. I don't care. This is for an emergency situation. You can make one of these if you have one of these cheap-ass um, cookie tins. You can make one of these at home without a drill, without electricity, and all you need is a sharp knife or a knife with a decent thickness of blade. I would not use a machete on this. It would just be too hard to handle. Something to hammer the end of it with, whether it be a hammer, a piece of 2x4, a concrete block or a cement block, a brick, whatever you have, a pipe wrench, anything you can hit the end of this with to punch it through, that's what you need. All right, anyway, I will probably show this later on if I can find a couple pieces of wood outside. Um, we'll see. And this is your, your simple, simple cookie tin wood cook stove. You can make it home. No special tools required. No electricity required. No batteries required. All you need is the tin, a knife, something to hit the knife with. And you, like I say, you don't even need the can. I just got the can basically for measurements from my legs. And how I made the legs is I stood them up so they were like this long. And I just folded them over to the back. Gave them a little strength. You can see this one's a little crooked. But I can tell by looking at it. I don't care if they're crooked or not as long as the pot can set on top of it. And it can cook and heat water. That's all I care about. This is a little bit bigger than some of the other wood stoves I have made that I will be uploading. The can wood stoves. Basically, they're made out of cans. Um, if you can make one of these, it will burn longer, it will get hotter quicker, and it will raise the pot enough to where it won't smoke as much as something like this. Okay, I'm fixing to go. I hope you can see everything. If you have any questions, like I said, um, basically this is what the center looks like <laughs> once I got done. Alright, that's it. I'm facing go. Hope this helps somebody out. Everyone have a good day. Bye.